Nice. So our next speaker is Kevin Chen, and he'll tell us about why you should learn to write C extension. So let's welcome Kevin. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Gavin. I'm coming from Hong Kong. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, why you should write C extensions. Uh, first, I will go through a, a simple example to illustrate why sometimes um, uh, in Python it is it is uh, difficult to estimate the performance if you have a simple algorithm. Uh, second is I will talk about uh, what's the ways that you can write the C extensions and normally what are the areas or sessions you have to consider. Uh, thirdly, I will talk about um, the modern tools you can write C extensions. For example, um, Cython, Python 11, and Number. Uh, I will go through quickly how you can write C extensions by the modern tools, which can uh, boost up the Python performance. First, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm now working as a quant developer as uh, in SIM Chorus, uh, which is a uh, quant asset management firm. Uh, the major language I use is Python, um, but before I also use C++ quite a lot. Uh, that's why I'm keen on the Python performance compared to C++ and how to see how to integrate between them. Um, also in my firm, uh, we, we do a lot of quantitative um, uh, analysis and uh, use, for example, pandas, uh, SciPy, NumPy, all those libraries. Uh, even though we have all those libraries helping us do the data analysis, but we also skin to perform uh, the the current uh, applications in a, a more faster way, so as to help the researchers do the result. Um, uh, also, I have also uh, a few personal projects. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to my GitHub account as well. Uh, the objective today. Um, First, uh, it is about uh, understanding what is what is the bottleneck in Python on the CPU bound problems, and uh, second is how to work around it by C extensions. Uh, why would be uh, so much helpful if you write in C extensions, so as to boost up the uh, Python performance. Uh, thirdly, is about the modern tools to write C extensions. I will compare between them. Uh, I will try to. Uh, tell my experience of uh, what is the, uh, the the situation that on which tools you may you may use, and uh, it will give you some of the uh, benefits of uh, in the development. Uh, first, uh, a simple problem I would like to go through a little bit. So it is algorithm which is to compute uh, the weight sum on the labels. So for example, you have a list of instruments. And I have two vectors. Uh, one is assigned with their labels, and another is the raised. Um, and the labels are hot. Are hot labels? Maybe the zero may represent uh, color red. One may represent uh, color yellow. Two may represent color blue. And then I would like to compute the weight sum uh, on the particular labels. So, for example, the 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 first label I have to pick up the first and the last race and sum it up to get the 0 0.7. And then the second label up to get the third and the fourth one to get the uh, weight sum of 0 0.5. So the question is how we can write a simple algorithm to get the weight sum on the labels. Uh, we may have a few options. Uh, first, uh, we use the for loop. So um, using Python for loop is straightforward. So we just iterate through each uh, instrument and find out which labels they belong to, and then add the, uh, add the weight on the labels. Second is a little bit smarter on the Python, we use the least comprehension. Uh, so first we iterate through each label. So first of all, we have three labels, then we iterate through each, all one and two. And then we, um, we check on the labels better, which one belongs to the particular label we are looking for, and some of their ways. Uh, if you compare one and two, uh, the first one, you have the complexity of, which depends only on the number of instruments, which is like the big O to N. The N is the number of instruments. So it is straightforward for this one. At least com comprehension second one, you're it actually iterating two steps. One is the number of labels you have, and then the number of instruments. 
So it, it looks to be a, a more complicated algorithm. Um, so if you are you are uh, familiar with NumPy, then you may use the NumPy to perform uh, to make the performance a bit better. So I just changed it to be on second one to third one. So I ju I just put uh, uh, the the weight sum as a dot product in the NumPy. So what NumPy is good is uh, they have a feature which is called the factorizations. Uh, it means they can run uh, the operations on multiple uh, elements in the array in parallel. And in this way, the total sum actually just goes through with their CAPI underneath just to boost up, boost up the performance. Uh, so I, I give you maybe five seconds to guess which one will, will perform the best. The first one, second one, the third one. Uh, the hint is okay. The third one is a better version as the second one. So it's just the comparison between first or first or the third one. Then the result is uh, it depends. So even though we have a more simple algorithm, but for example now I have a thousand instruments, and I have uh, the number of neighbors maybe just a few numbers, ten numbers of neighbors are just arbitrarily assign them to the instruments and then uh, the least labels we have then uh, the numpy versions which has actually has more complicated algorithms just give us a better result than the uh, simple algorithms which is completely written in python uh, but when the number of labels growing up so we can expect that the number of uh, uh, labels has become uh, from 20 to 100 to 20 or 50, then the little bit more complicated algorithm will um, uh, become uh, a, a little bit uh, more, uh, running more time than the simple algorithm. So it makes sense for me that the OM end, uh, actually the end is on the NumPy level, which is on the CAPI. Uh, but the M is on the Python level. So even though we have two different algorithms, and, and if you write it, write it in other uh, languages, in C, in Java, in Go, or in whatever language, we understand, we all understand the basic uh, algorithm uh, uh, lessons that the more complicated algorithm should give uh, a worse uh, performance time. But in Python, if you use our library, it is not the case. It is, it is weird to me. So that's why I would now dive in a little more for that. The first question is how, how Python works. Uh, why Python uh, comparatively is not than other languages? Uh, why you heard people saying that um, Python is good for development, but if you're keen on performance, uh, don't use it. Uh, first of all, Python is, is an interpret language. So it means first it compiles the source code in the bytecode, uh, but the bytecode is not the machine bytecode. Uh, and actually, you can use the Python module, which is called this, to uh, illustrate uh, how they compile the bytecode into the operations, which is in um, Python virtual machines language. So the by the bytecode actually actually is used and executed on Python virtual machine. And in this way, every time you run the source code, uh, it happens, I, I guess it happens to you before is, uh, after you, you have programmed run for a while, then suddenly he crash uh, on the um, on the error that, oh, the variable doesn't exist. Uh, there's some uh, a simple uh, syntax error that actually happened in your fat finger. So that, that is why Python is compiled code on the fly. Actually, this is just compiled to bytecode, which is running on the Python virtual machine. So that's when the people are keen on the performance, they will go for extending Python with C or C++. Uh, so you can see there's a page uh, in the official Python website, uh, which is to tell you how to write the C extensions. Uh, you can extend it by the C Python API. So you just compile them into the shared library in Windows, which is in .dll, while in Unix, uh, which is in .so. Uh, the shared library, when you run it, when you run the Python program, they just import it as a Python module. But they have to go through uh, a few areas. First, uh, uh, you have to go through with the combinations and the language. If they compile them, 
uh, with a particular share filed in, uh, in, in the name patent, which first one, uh, you have to include your module name. And second part, you have to provide your Python version. For some in this case, it is uh, Python 3.5. And uh, thirdly, you have to come. You you have to tell it your um, CQ, CPU architecture. Uh, it is uh, sixty four bit, and then the fourth one, uh, which kernel are you in? So you have to compile with the particular uh, file pattern named always. Second is the reference card. So uh, you may have heard that Python how Python manage the memory is by the garbage collector. So it means every time when you create the object. Uh, you put the alias in it, then underneath uh, the Python objects uh, reference count have been incremented. So when you write the C extensions, you have to explicitly call uh, the the uh, API to increment the count, so as to let the garbage collector know uh, this object is owned by a particular alias. Uh, and then when uh, the uh, the object is out of the scope, then it's not referenced by any alias anymore. And you have to write, you have to declare and call the API to decrement the count. So in the in writing C extensions, you have to do all this stuff nine by nine. Otherwise, you may have segmentation fraud or memory leak in it. The uh, thirdly about ownership rules. So when you write the C functions, uh, if you if you have written uh, C um, or C plus uh, programming, then you know that. Uh, the memory management between between them will be different. You have to own, uh, you have to handle all those memory uh, in C plus plus level. So when you return the uh, the the object out of the functions, then um, you have to tell on this on the C Python where the object is still owned on the C level, or actually you pass pass out uh, the the whole objects to the Python level to let the object to be managed by the um, uh, 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 garbage collector or the memory man management in Python. So all the things have to be uh, explicitly stated when you write the C extensions. Um, finally, exception handling. Uh, when it happens for the exceptions, you have to inform the Python rate uh, so as to throw out exceptions and also trace by other things. Uh, it seems to be difficult if you follow the documentation to, all, to handle all the stuff and easily make the mistakes. And that's why today we have a bunch of tools to help us do that. Uh, the first one I will introduce is called Cython. It's a classical approach. Uh, there are a bunch of libraries. Uh, the open source libraries have been using it already. And you have SciPy, Panda, Scikit-learn. Uh, second one is more uh, on, on the C or C++ development. Uh, which is called Pi by 11. So it, it just binds uh, the Python uh, with the C++ 11 source code. So if you have a bunch of C++ uh, source code, then you can use Pi by 11 to bind back to the Python level. A third one is number. Um, so actually, it is, uh, it is not writing C extensions, uh, but it, it is just a just-in-time combinations by LLVM. Uh, but I will, I will go through in the following slides uh, actually how they can do similar stuff as uh, writing C extensions. Uh, there are other model tools that you may ha have heard before. Uh, first of all, uh, interface between C++ uh, with Python. Uh, but nowadays, the, the people who compare them with uh, Pi by 11 and uh, more likely they will use Pi by 11. Uh, Python, um, so you have the Python source code, but you just give out uh, the commands at the, as the hints for the compiler in Python to compile the native Python code. Uh, uh, so it's dynamic runtime interface. Uh, so you have your library already, and you see how to link it back on Python level. Uh, those are not covered today, but you, if you're interested, you can go go through into it after. First, uh, Cython, uh, I would say it is classical approach uh, because uh, it is it is stable and you can always get the support everywhere. Uh, it is it is simple to write the Cythons, especially if you're a Python developer. Um, so if you have a piece of Python source code, uh, first of all, you can just change uh, the file name, the file extensions from .py to .pyx and do nothing on the source code, then compile it with that, you can already gain, uh, have the performance gained. Uh, actually, if you have 
a native Python source code and compile it, uh, you can already get 25% performance gain. So I just did the uh, performance comparison with uh, the Python code uh, on everything I showed. So it have a particular kind of good uh, uh, improvement, uh, even though I did nothing uh, on the on the development side. Um, but if you have the source code that mostly operating on NumPy, the performance gain will be quite little. Uh, but I will go through a little bit more details on that. Uh, to achieve the C runtime, it means if you would like to write all the stuff uh, without calling the C Python API conventions, uh, actually you need to change a little bit on the syntax uh, on the Siphon source code. So first of all, uh, write and declare the function as dev. You can declare a function as cpdev and cdev. Uh, what are the difference between them? So cpdev is uh, for the hybrid functions. Uh, it is accessible in Python level, but uh, you try to use the faster C calling conventions. Um, then cdev is purely C functions. It will not call any C Python API. So it is a pure C function, uh, which is in Cypher syntax. Normally, when you write um, the C dev and achieving this uh, C performance, and then you expose it by the CP dev. Let me give you a little bit taste on the example. This is the same algorithm I wrote before, but I changed it in the Cypher syntax. So you can see the, um, the, uh, the pattern looks like the Python syntax, uh, except a few cases. Uh, you have to declare the, um, the types uh, of the variables or on the equal parameters. Actually, you can, it is optional for you to, to declare or not. Uh, if you don't declare it, they just treat it as the uh, Python objects. Uh, you can also declare the output, uh, the returned um, uh, types. And then uh, in the functions, you declare all the variables types uh, as said. Uh, you can declare a node. If not, it is treated as the Python object. But you declare it, they will find the right path to compile on the C level with the C Python API. So uh, if I just compare it with my previous algorithm, so um, if, if I just declare cpdev and I, I, I declare all the types, actually what's working behind is uh, before in Python level, you just operate it on the NumPy rate. So every time you just iterate on each element, you just uh, acquired the global interpret log, uh, which is called good. Uh, the acquiring and then returning back on the log actually is time consuming. But you just walk through what we call the memory field of the rate in in the um, uh, in the Cypher level. Then there's nothing to acquire and release the good. So this is the one part which gives our performance gain. So compared to our previous algorithm, you may see a stunning improvement, improvement like uh, hundreds times uh, of performance gain. Uh, second one is Pi by 11. Uh, I, I will not go through uh, in detail for Pi by 11 because uh, I suppose not everyone may have the experience of writing C or C++, uh, but just to give you a taste, if you write on this Python 11, first of all, uh, you just have the head files to have the ex implementations of the functions. Then second, uh, you just bind it back uh, into the CPP file. So first of all, you declare the uh, the module named. Second is uh, the Python named, and what are the functions on the C level you would like to bind back. Uh, you have to de declare the return value sorry, return value policy, which is the ownership policy which I mentioned before. So you have to declare whether you move the object without the copying, uh, or you would not copy the whole object to the Python level. Um, the, at one point you have to be careful that uh, when you're running C extension is normally uh, uh, one part which is the time consuming part in uh, programming or in, in, in C or C++ level is and the copy the object. So if you try to move all the object without copying them to the Python level, it will give out uh, the stunning performance gain. And uh, dot string, you can declare the dot string on it. Uh, you can declare the names of the variables. And finally, which is good in uh, Python 11 is you can have the function overloading. It means that you can have a few implementations on the same Python functions so when the users call the functions 
actually just look back at the function we've been looked back with the particular uh, parameter list and the types so to look for the uh, implementations so you can have different Im implementation the same functions depending on the parameter list and uh, the types of the parameters uh, thirdly number i would say is a rising star i think in the past um, a few years it has been there for a while since 2012 but since the past few years it's getting much attention because it, it, the features the support uh, has been improved a lot so basically in numpy there are two modes uh, one is which is called the optic mode uh, they just convert the source code to bytecode uh, the same uh, path which is on the python but then they will compile the bytecode to machine code on the fly. So rather than calling them to the virtual machines, just uh, uh, run on the machine code, uh, which is which is the way uh, to, to have the stunning performance game comparing to the uh, Python original path. Another way is uh, NumPy, NumPy will try to compile the path without any course of Python C API. So similar to Siphon, of um, CP dev and C dev, it just tried to do everything under C level, and then return out the Python object. So in this way, it will have a much better performance, uh, which is called the no num no Python modes. Uh, so at the current stage, uh, by default, uh, you can choose to always uh, use the no Python mode to see whether they can compile it in a in a in a, uh, in a way which is uh, escaping the calling the C Python API, if and it fails, it just uh, suddenly fall back to object mode. And but in the future, you have to declare explicitly; otherwise, they'll throw the exceptions. Uh, also, number supports the ahead of time combinations. It means uh, you can have all the source code uh, in the library. When users install library, they will first compile them in the shared library. Uh, like the C extensions, so that when we use it, they, do, they don't need to recompile them again. Uh, what is good for number is they support uh, the, the GPU programming, which follows the uh, modern uh, development. Uh, give you a little bit taste on, on how it works. So actually the same source code as the Python one, uh, but you just need to put the decorator, which is called uh, at JIT, and declare that Okay, I at first tried to compile into no Python mode. So everything is the same for the Python source code. And nothing has been changed just to cater with the uh, number. And also can declare the functions uh, by the decorators with uh, explicit types. So you can explicitly type what the return types and the input parameter types. So as to give out the hints for a number to compile. So the more hints you give out, uh, the more possible that they can compile in the no Python mode. Uh, also, if you are a developer, you're developing a library, uh, actually uh, you don't want users to first call the functions, it spend time for combinations, and second time uh, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is in the faster performance. You, you want the users always to have the compiled uh, shared libraries beforehand. So you can have your ahead of time combinations. Uh, so the only difference between what we had before is uh, we just put the decorator to tell the number what are the module uh, and also the Python function names to compile. So the same, it is the same Python source code, uh, but you have to tell explicitly the types so as to give out hints uh, in the combinations. So after that, if you have this piece of code, and uh, properly uh, explicitly write that in the sub.py that when the user install library, then they will compile them to share to the to share library uh, in the C extensions. Uh, compare performance. So have a quick summary to compare all those uh, tools I mentioned. Um, uh, if if we just compare to to Python, actually number. Um, Cyton and Python 11 differences is roughly the same. So you can have 100 to 200 times of performance gained. Uh, but if you compare a uh, detail between number, uh, Cyton and, and Python 11, I would say uh, Python 11 
has a better control on the sea level, so it is expected to have a better performance than Cyclone. Uh, but stunning for me uh, is uh, nowadays Namba has a very good performance gain that uh, it has it, it do the best job when they compiled to uh, what to the uh, to the to the source code when they compile source code, they use the LLVM IR optimizer to optimize the path uh, in the machine code. So at the current stage, they give out actually the best performance compared to Cython and Piper Eleven. So if I compare between them, first of all, I don't mean that uh, uh, number has the best performance. We should always go with that. Uh, but actually, it depends on situations and the environments uh, to choose to choose. Uh, first of all, uh, why Cyphon is still performing is it is it is still a very stable tool. Uh, it just requires a very minimal infrastructure requirements. Uh, it can just request the users to have uh, the GCC uh, to compile the source code. Uh, it doesn't need to support the native C++ uh, uh, syntax. You can have the C++ 98, because C++ 98 is the old version of C++ and uh, always uh, good enough to compile the Cyclone source code. Uh, the cons is uh, it doesn't catch up with the modern development tools. For example, it is difficult to support the GPU programming. Uh, there's enhancement by other developers to have the libraries to support, but natively in Cyclone, it is not easily supported. Uh, Primary 11, uh, you have the most control in the sea level. It gives out the best performance. Uh, you can find out the right compilers, which is uh, super for you to use in C or C++. But I believe for most companies, for most enterprise, uh, especially if you're a startup, uh, if you have the Python development teams, not all of them have the C++ development experience and requires the resources in developing in C++ and the time and the effort is much more than Python development. So it really requires uh, the knowledge for that, which is a cons, I would say. Um, if you're working in big company, then it doesn't matter. For example, in uh, in Google, in TensorFlow, uh, they have switched uh, the swing to Python 11 because underneath TensorFlow has all written in C and C++, so they just need to buy it back to Python. Uh, they have a bunch of developers working on that, so the performance is the key, and they have to consider distributions. Pipe 11 is their choice. Thirdly, number, uh, I think it's really good for interactive usage. Uh, if you're a data scientist, uh, if you use intensively with Jupyter Notebook, IPython, I would like to instantly get the performance gain in your Jupyter Notebook. Uh, just use number. You just get the decorated on your functions, and then they compile it on the fly. And also, they have an excellent performance in, in their JIT combinations. Um, but the cons is that uh, distribu distribution is difficult because uh, it requires more on the uh, infrastructure in the machines. So when it distributes out as the library, you have to require users to have uh, the CLAN. By default, it's not always available in all the Linux machines. Uh, you have to request they have a new version of LLVM lead, uh, so as to compile on the fly for number. And also, we say uh, number has insufficient support to object-oriented design, so they they can easily compile the functions. But uh, if you would like to have a class to have an object which is all in the C level, uh, number is difficult to support that. Uh, but Cyclone and Pi by 11 it always supports the object-oriented design, especially in Pi by 11. So in this case, uh, if you would like to have the whole library on the C or C++ level, uh, or to have the uh, uh, C extensions performance gained, uh, number may not be a good choice for you. Finally, if you are interested, you can go to um, uh, the, my uh, collab uh, notebook. Uh, it will include all the examples I've gone through, and it's, it is also a good example to show you that actually all those three libraries support in interactive mode. If you uh, write in Jupyter notebook, uh, you could choose whatever um, Cyclone, Python 11, or number. They all support it on the Jupyter notebook as well. Uh, if you're interested uh, more about that and have any questions, please feel free to contact me via email or LinkedIn. I'm always happy with that. So that's all for me today. Um, 
Any questions at the moment? Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Steve Boyd, and uh, well, I have actually two questions. But uh, the first one is uh, more like a feedback of another question. Um, when I look at your uh, performance chart, I start wondering if uh, you are you uh, you are comp compiling your shared library with the same compiler uh, flag such as, uh, or with the same optimization label. So, if you want to make your uh, performance chart more uh, convincing to me, uh, I would suggest you to attach at least how you compile the, the command, how you compile your shared library. So. I can make sure that okay, you are using the same optimizing label or the same uh, flag, and uh, yeah, I believe that you are you maybe you are not using the same compiler. So uh, some of the performance uh, performance boosts may uh, contribute contribute by the compiler itself, but not the uh, uh, maybe not the size or number or uh, pi by eleven. Okay, that, that's the first thing. Uh, the second one is. Um, uh, can you talk about, uh, uh, because I have uh, limited experience with pi by 11, so I, 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 uh, the returning policy uh, uh, is kind of confusing to me, so can you um, elaborate more about the return policy uh, in pi by 11, such as, okay, if, uh, I see in your slides that you are using the move return policy, so is that the same as the move semantic in yeah, thank you for your questions and your, and your um, uh, comment. Uh, for your first question, yeah, I, I totally agree that it's better to provide the optimizer. Um, I would say it is sometimes difficult to have the apple to apple comparison between them, especially uh, if if uh, we we are using the um, uh, the on the number this under under this using CLAND. So actually, in my comparisons, they they're not actually the same. But I would I, I try to achieve the same optimize uh, the compile to that. So the best way is we all all the free libraries using CLAND, and with the same versions for that. But uh, I did a little bit trick for that because it takes me some time to do that. So actually, for uh, NumPy, uh, sorry for Cyzone and Papa Eleven, I just used GCC. And then it's the um, the third one using CLAND because it's only supported uh, uh, a compiler in it. But a compiler is, is the key. Uh, but my experience is uh, actually nowadays um, CLAND and GCC, the performance is, I would say, roughly the same. Uh, in some situations, CLAND has a little bit more a better performance, while uh, sometimes uh, the GCC has a bit, little bit performance, better performance, so it's 50-50 race at the current stage. Um, but uh, for, for me, as mentioned previously, uh, Lumba, Lumba requires CLAND, uh, which is actually not the case that every, I would say, every infrastructure instance or uh, every enterprise port. It, it seems to be a joke that, okay, it's, it's easy. You, if you have Docker, you can easily get the CLAND. Um, but I would say in most cases I work before um, the when the comp and the en when the enterprise uh, holds the machines on PMS and then they just install whatever uh, provided like ten years ago. It's mostly it's GCC, <laughs> so it, it requires some time to catch up uh, uh, for the DevOps gap between uh, the big enterprise and the uh, latest technology. And the second question is regarding. Uh, I believe I can see your compiling command in your collapse a notebook, right? Oh, for the for the compilation, actually, when you use it, when you use it like a library, just app in a set of py, and it is okay. straightforward. Okay. Uh, but on on you can also do it in the compile light. Uh, on my way doing my examples, I do it in collab. So actually, you just you just you can just do it in um in Jupyter notebook or in IPython. I uh, just put your extensions module to compile that. So the, those, those three cases of, uh, or those three ways to compile them are equivalent on the performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second question is about uh, the Python 11 return fair policy. Basically, they have um, a five return fair policy, uh, the copy, move, and um, 
uh, the third one is uh, by default. I, I forgot exactly the third one, but basically what the difference between move and copy is when you return object out, you need to use the C++ 11's latest move semantic so as to just uh, uh, swap the the address between uh, between the returned uh, object or you just copy the whole values to uh, uh, the Python method. So, uh, but it, it is it is not easy to um, always move the memory out because, for example, you have a huge mm -hmm. class, your customized class, uh, you have to ensure that your class supports uh, the move semantic uh, by default or all, all those attributes. So, um, but in my case, for example, the, the case I showed is, uh, it is a simple NumPy array so uh, basically, the NumPy array implement in PyPy 11 supports the move semantic already. So uh, rather than copying the whole array, like the list of a thousand instruments, you just move it on Python level so as to get the performance gain. So that that is something uh, which is compared to uh, Cython. Cython at, at the current state, it doesn't support the move semantics. So the performance uh, in, in this way can be different uh, because of uh, whether it's copying or not. Thank you. Uh, hello, Jack. Oh. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for sharing. And I have a question about uh, number. Number. Uh, is there any modification we need to rewrite our Code if we use number to improve the performance. Yes. Uh, basically, I would say it's, uh, most of cases you don't need to. You just put the decorate in it, but you have to aware that uh, even though you have no changes on your code, uh, it may be just compiled uh, in the object mode. So if you would like to achieve and no Python mode, sometimes you may change a little bit to follow uh, the support the features they have, so as to compile on the uh, no Python mode. But I would say most of, most of the cases, um, uh, you don't need to change so much because uh, if you if you by in in your nature or pattern of your functions, if you cannot move the no Python mode, no matter how you change it, you cannot. So normally the, when they support, uh, my my experience is if you have a uh, algorithm which is iterating through an array or doing the while loop. If your all the loops in your functions, it's likely that they can compile the no Python mode. Uh, if it fails, then you may need to see whether you can you can change a little bit pattern of it. Uh, for example, sp split it into different functions uh, so as to separate out uh, the part that you can be compiled no Python mode and the part they cannot. Okay, thank you. So it uh, it seems there is no more questions, and that that's thank, thanks Stephen for his wonderful talk. Thank you everyone. Uh, hope to hope to join you guys in phase uh, in next year. Yeah, hope to see you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye.